for JHA Silver Lake Banks, Data Automation Made Easy. My name is Greg Richards, Director of Marketing for EnableSoft and moderator for today's event. A few housekeeping points before we begin. Your telephone and computer microphones have been muted. While we won't be accepting any live questions during today's event, you can type any questions you do have into the chat box on your screen. We'll answer as many of these questions as we can if there's time remaining towards the end of the presentation. Any unanswered questions will be addressed within 24 hours of this webinar. Now without further delay, I'd like to bring on Dan, Wel Dan Wellbaum, Executive Vice President for EnableSoft, to introduce today's topic. Well, welcome again to the EnableSoft webinar today entitled The Efficiency Secret for Jack Henry Silver Lake Institutions. Uh, we want to extend a special thanks to each of you for investing your time with us today. Uh, my name is Dan Wellbaum and I am the Executive Vice President of EnableSoft and we're speaking with you from our headquarters here in Orlando, Florida. And by way of very quick background, I've been with EnableSoft nearly two years and have over 35 years of banking software and technology exper experience, including being past president of a couple of core banking system providers. We are joined this afternoon by two other speaker participants, and it's a real pleasure first to introduce our special guest from one of our 60-plus Jack Henry & Associates Silver Lake Foxtrot customers, Wes Berry, who's Vice President of Retail Banking at Institution for Savings in Newburyport, Massachusetts, which is just located outside of the Boston area. I'll be introducing Wes a little later on. Our second speaker participant is Justin Calhoun, who's our Director of Sales Support and Product Marketing here at EnableSoft. Justin has seven plus years of experience with EnableSoft, originally starting his career in our customer training and customer support area. And Justin will be doing the product demonstration against the Jack Henry Silver Lake uh, core system later on in our webinar. By way of objectives, uh, just to remind each of you, the key objectives for our webinar this afternoon is certainly to introduce you to what many see as the efficiency secret for Jack Henry Silver Lake institutions, the concept data automation made easy. We want to help you learn that there is a better, what we believe is a better alternative to manual or programmatic or outsourced efforts when automating areas of data entry, data maintenance, data integration, data migration, and so on. And then one of the most important things of the webinar is obviously to give you the opportunity to hear from a peer the Jack Henry Silver Lake peer of yours on how their bank is driving significant business process efficiency and time and cost savings with data automation software. And then finally, we want to share with each of you how many, many ways or many examples of how your institution can start saving significant time and dollars with this type of technology. The roadmap for accomplishing these objectives is I'd like to, we'd like to first of all start off with what is data automation? We'll talk about why is that an important area that our institutions like yourself are, are looking at today. We'll introduce you to the solution and introduce you to very many, many ways that Jack Henry Silver Lake customers use data automation in their institutions. And then of course you'll hear the story from Wes Berry where he'll talk about how his organization has used data automation in his bank and what values it is bringing to his institution. We'll then give you a demonstration and open up for questions and wrap up. First of all, what is data automation? Well, first of all, this is a software tool that in its, in its simplest form, it automates the movement of data. It automatically puts data somewhere or changes data somewhere or automatically retrieves data somewhere but it automates the movement of data related to various data-related tasks, such as data entry and data maintenance and data integration and things that you see there on the slide. It certainly is an alternative to manual, programmatic, or outsourcing efforts. We'll talk more about that in a few moments. This is point-and-click software. There's no programming required. The whole idea is using this software your organization can benefit, again, by a significant increase in business process efficiency and time and dollar savings. And most of our customers, we have nearly 500 financial institutions all over the country using this software every day. Most of our customers view this technology, and many will say to us, well, this is like, when I, when I invest in this technology, it's like adding people without adding people. And again, we'll talk more about that over the next several minutes. 
So why data automation? Why is this an area that uh, more and more organizations are looking at? Well, a key reason is that most organizations, if you're like many organizations that we talk to, most organizations view data as a strategic asset, very similar to your capital, your customers, your markets that you serve, and so on. And we find that most Jack Henry Silver Lake institutions have a need related to, to dealing with this strategic asset data, have a need to enter data or maintain data or integrate it, migrate it, aggregate it, test it, and so on. And there's obviously real reasons that organizations have that need. It's not just that you have a need to enter data or maintain data or integrate data or migrate data or whatever. You're doing it for very specific reasons to obviously serve your customers, make sure you're deal not dealing with dirty data, but you have a high quality of, of, of data in your organization to support decision processes, opening up branches, closing branches, bringing new products to market, taking products off the market, and so on. But there's real reasons that, you have, that organizations have a need to enter and maintain and then integrate and migrate data. Now historically, historically, what are the traditional or the conventional ways that institutions like yourself have dealt with these data-related tasks? Well, our experience in dealing with hundreds of institutions is, and, and you all experience this every day, the traditional approaches of dealing with these data-related tasks are you manually do things, or you develop programs or write custom programs to do these things, or you outsource these functions to either some temporary folks coming in to help you, or you outsource it to a third-party vendor to write some programs to do these things for you, or you create manual unstructured processes, or oftentimes do nothing because maybe it's too time-consuming or costly to do certain things. But, but the challenges, though, of these conventional approaches of dealing with data typically are long lead times, you need programmatic expertise to do these things, there's typically a high cost. If you're doing things manually, there's, a, there's risk, there's accuracy issues, and many times if it takes too long to do it, you might miss a business opportunity. So those are some of the challenges of the traditional ways of dealing with data-related tasks. Thus the reason for introducing what we, again, and revealing, if you will, the efficiency secret for Jack Henry Silver Lake institutions or financial institutions just like yourself a solution we call Foxtrot One, this data automation software technology. What this is, at a, at, a, at a quick introductory, in a quick introductory manner, is it's software again that automates the movement of data. We're automatically putting data somewhere or retrieving data somewhere, but we always do it. A key note here is we always interact with the presentation layer of your application. We never take data and take it from a, a source and automatically enter it into your database. Using Foxtrot as a tool, you will create instructions or steps or a script, and we'll talk more about that in a few minutes, that automates data entry functions or data maintenance functions or data migration functions. And we always do this with a presentation layer, so that as that data goes in, it's going, just like you interact with a presentation layer through your mouse and keyboard, Foxtrot's going to do the exact same thing that you can take advantage of the business logic, the audit trails, the security, doing exactly what you're doing today, but doing it much faster, much more accurately with this tool. This software also, as my way of introduction, works with all platforms or applications. For instance, sometimes when we discuss this technology with Jack Henry Silver Lake institutions, they say, this is great. I've heard how it saves a lot of time and money for a lot of other Jack Henry institutions with this tool, but they often, or they, they're not mindful of the fact that yes, this tool obviously does that against the Jack Henry core system, but this tool also, when you invest in this solution, is used or can be used with any Windows, any browser or web application, even Excel, in addition to the traditional legacy applications. This is point and click software, no coding is ever required, and again, it's like a wizard-like software to set up these functions which we'll demonstrate in just a few minutes. So that's a quick introduction to it. The advantages of it again are it automates these tasks, no coding, it eliminates manual efforts, eliminates manual unstructured processes, improves data quality, streamlines business processes, and it really at the bottom line is it saves significant time and dollars. And the average payback, and again I've been associated with banking technology software for over 35 years, 
our customers experience typically a payback of less than six months. They average around 90 days. So there's a quick payback on this application. So how do Jack Henry Silver Lake institutions, just like yourself, use this software every day? What data-related tasks are they impacting in their organizations? First of all, there's a significant improvement in automating data entry, automating data maintenance, and the things that you see up here. Let's walk through each one of these areas very quickly with just giving you a couple of examples. Today's webinar, by the way, is just a, an opportunity to introduce you to the capabilities. We'd certainly like to get together with you afterwards and talk more about how this can help automate very specific things in your bank or your institution, but maybe as a result of seeing some of the high level points on these slides, you might be prompted to say, okay, this might be an area that we could automate in my institution. For instance, we deal with uh, Jack Henry Silver Lake banks all over the country. For instance, we just had a, a large northeast Jack Henry Silver Lake institution invest in Foxtrot over the last year. They service around 8,000 mortgage loans every year. If you're servicing mortgage loans, as you all know, and you're escrowing tax or insurance information, they get that new information from the respective counties or cities or insurance agencies or organizations. In the past, it took over a couple of weeks to manually, multiple people to manually enter that new tax and insurance information. This, this organization invested, invested in Foxtrot for many reasons, including this one, but this took a couple week project done in a manual environment by multiple people down to a, just a few hours. We had a, a Jack Henry Institution on the East Coast who recently invested in Foxtrot. They offer a warehouse line, uh, if you will, and before they sell off those loans, they're obviously manually, or they're, they're, they're entering those interest payments on a monthly basis. In the past, it took a couple of people to manually, several, several hours to manually post those interest payments on a monthly basis. Foxtrot was able to automate that function and do it in minutes, do it accurately, do it automatically. We had a Jack Henry Institution in the Southeast. Of course, it does all kinds of, uh, Foxtrot automates all kinds of banking related functions. But this institution, with their 1,300 employees every year, uh, the employees select from a menu of health options, and they would typically bring in temp people for a couple of weeks to enter all the options that their 1,300 employees would select. They used Foxtrot to automate this process, and it took a couple of hours versus a couple of weeks, again, done manually. Again, like adding people without adding people. Data maintenance, a major area that Foxtrot is used for every day in Jack Henry Silver Lake Banks. Uh, we had uh, a recently a Southeast uh, Jack Henry Silver Lake Institution who serves a military community. And in the past, and from time to time, they're, they're waiving service charges with low balances from the military audience or maybe high transaction volume, but low, low balances. That's, that's traditionally would recall for possibly a service charge or whatever. In the past, they were manually waiving service charges or whatever. Here they use Foxtrot to automatically do that and impact the organization significantly. So, I, Or if your organization is, has loan officers that change and you want to move 1,000 accounts from loan officer A to loan officer B, C, and D, people do that automatically. So these are many ways that Foxtrot is used to automate data maintenance. Data integration. We had a uh, kind of a Mid-South uh, uh, Jack Henry financial institution who in the past uh, prior to Foxtrot, they had Calix for the loan origination system. So you might be using PC Lender or Avista or whatever for your mortgage loan origination system or Laser Pro in the commercial loan origination system or whatever, and possibly that data may not be integrated. Maybe it is today, but maybe it's not. In this instance, this bank, this is a billion dollar bank, uh, they had Calix for the mortgage loan origination system. It was not integrated, so they were manually boarding over 20 loans a day, taking around 30 minutes per loan, they used Foxtrot to automatically take that data and enter it in less than a minute. So again, if you've got applications in your bank that aren't integrated today, Foxtrot is used every day to automatically enter data from one source into a targeted source. Data migration. We've got multiple Jack Henry institutions who they're out acquiring other branches or other banks, and as opposed to getting a vendor or themselves programmatically using uh, their resources to do the data conversion, they'll use Foxtrot to automate that. Or if you've got an application in your bank, a Windows application, a cache management Windows application, you want to go to a browser application, well, Foxtrot can be used to automate, bring that data over to that new platform. 
data aggregation, uh, Valley, every day uh, Jack Henry Silver Lake institutions are using Foxtrot to preparing for a loan meeting, preparing for a board meeting. You're going, you're going out and accessing multiple spreadsheets or multiple applications in a green screen or a Windows or a browser application. People will use Foxtrot to create a series of instructions, hit the play button. In a, in a lights out environment, they'll go out and get data or, or, or scrape data off of different systems. And then multiple areas in the other areas of IT and operations, people use this all the time for doing real-time application monitoring. Uh, we have Jack Hitter institutions that might have Laser Pro and they, they might have some integration in place, but that they still do data validation. Well, Foxtrot can basically do very, very quickly if they compare data from one application source or data source to another data source to make sure that the data was brought over properly. So if you're doing kind of manual data quality checking in your organization, Foxtrot can automate that. In addition, Foxtrot is used to automate application testing as well. So again, notice I'm not covering each point here. I'm just trying to point out or introduce you to several areas that Jack Henry institutions are using, every, using Foxtrot every day to automate these data-related tasks. Very quickly before I introduce Wes to, to share his story with data automation, who, let me just introduce you quickly to who Enablesoft is. We're an organization based in Orlando, Florida, in operation over 18 years serving nearly 500 inst uh, financial institutions across the country from very large to very small, serving over 60 Jack Henry institutions, a little over the third, or actually it's around 36% now of all financial institutions, over a billion use this solution every day to save significant time and dollars, and more and more institutions are seeing this as a must-have technology. Very quickly, some, some quotes. Um, this comes from a southeastern Jack Henry institution that, that invested in Foxtrot over the last year. Uh, one of the vice presidents said this, she, she literally said, I just wanted to let you know that this is just about the best thing I've seen in my working career. I'm actually having fun with this technology. It was a quote there. Uh, this organization talks about saving a significant amount of dollars using Foxtrot, a uh, taking project that took, took weeks or hours down to minutes. So those are just some examples of institutions just like yourself and some of their comments of how they, uh, ways that they benefit from Foxtrot or data automation. So with that, I'd like to take a few moments to introduce Wes Berry. And I'll let Wes walk through a little bit of introduction about who his organization is and why the organization invested in this technology and how it's bringing value to their organization. So with, with, with that, Wes, I'd like to turn it over to you. All right. Thank you, Dan. Um, I'll just give you a uh, quick background on my overview. My name is, as Dan said, is Wes Barry. I'm the Vice President of Retail Banking at the Institution for Super Savings in Newburyport, Mass. And um, basically, uh, as I'm sure many of you are aware, uh, being, you know, community and regional banks, we all share many hats. And basically, I provide some oversight of our retail banking services, including uh, managing IRA administration, and uh, generally making sure that everything runs smoothly uh, with Jack Henry and our data and stuff like that behind the scenes. And I've been working with the bank uh, since 2004. So a little quick background on the Institution for Savings. Um, we were founded in 1820, uh, the third savings bank in Mass. And this makes us one of the oldest um, savings banks still in existence in the country, if not the oldest bank. Uh, we're very, you know, in one of very stable bank. And uh, we have assets totaling $1.475 billion. That's actually a little outdated. We're just about to, um, in the past couple months, we're now at around $1.6 billion. And um, what shocks many people is that we only have seven full service locations uh, with that number of assets. And um, one very special thing to me and all of us who works for the bank is uh, how much we are invested in our local communities. In the past few years alone, we've donated um, you know, millions of dollars to local charitable causes such as the hospitals and schools and things like that. So um, it's a you know, great place to work for. All right, so here's some examples of some of the things we've used Foxtrot with. And these are kind of... Um, some what I would call quick, quick fixes that uh, sometimes you know we couldn't even do it all before, and but uh, you know, Foxtrot makes it very quick um, and easy in order to do this stuff. Some examples are um, automating withholding rate changes uh, when the 
state changes decides to change their withholding rate, you know, we can uh, very easily have Foxtrot go in and like I said, like it says there, under an hour. I mean, that was something that would have probably taken, uh, you know, a good day or more just having to key in and go change, like, all of our thousands of IRA accounts to reflect that. Um, it's really good at using cleaning up your CIF and cleaning up your accounts. We, when we upgraded to Jack Henry's Yellowhammer BSA solution, we no longer needed to use the risk fields that were in Silver Lake. And in fact, what was happening is, is that the data that was in those risk fields was causing problems because it was conflicting with the data that was in Yellowhammer. So again, this is another instance where we could go into a probably around 10,000 to 20,000 CIF and have it actually uh, remove the those risk fields. And you know, that's something that we probably, you know, we probably would have never even bothered doing because it would have just been an, un, you know, a unfeasible task, or we would have had to pay uh, Jack Henry to programmatically remove those things. And, uh, you know, following on that is, you know, anything that you need to do mass data cleanup. Um, we converted to Silver Lake Core system in 2009, and although our conversion went pretty well. Um, we still find little things here and there that aren't just quite right with the system and based on our data conversion and again that's another thing that you can just very quickly fix um, in a matter of minutes to hours depending upon what you want to do. And another um, issue where we've used it is posting of transactions. So for example we've had some issues lately with our ATMs and transactions not being hard posted to customers' accounts. Well, as you can imagine, customers tend to get pretty upset when their deposit is missing. <laughs> so uh, luckily for us, we've been able to use Foxtrot. And this is a real life scenario. I had one of our operations people who is you know, somewhat computer savvy, but uh, definitely not a programmer and definitely not with a computer background. And I worked with her, and she was able to write a script and get hundreds of uh, memo posts posted to customers' accounts. And um, the whole process took a little over half an hour with the, the portion of Foxtrot posting the transactions only taking 15 minutes. So you can probably imagine how long it would have taken to have manually posted um, hundreds of ATM transactions. And you know, that's uh, in addition to the time savings, you, know, you can't put a price on happy customers who now have access to their money and aren't calling up worrying and wondering where it went to. So those are just a few examples of some of the, what I would call fairly easy uses of Foxtrot, um, you know, to get quick benefit from your purchase. And then, as I'm sure many of you on this call are aware of, the uh, Hurricane Sandy <laughs> disaster that occurred last year. I'm sure many of you um, are processed out of the Lynnhurst, New Jersey location. And, uh, you know, basically, as many of you know, this knocked out processing for, you know, hundreds of banks that use that processing facility. And it was not a pleasant experience, obviously. Uh, we were, you know, basically never knew when we came in if we were going to be, what day's work we were going to be caught up to. And it took several weeks for everything to get caught up. Well, I have to tell you, this is one area where we really feel like uh, Foxtrot shined and we got our money's worth. And um, because we really were able to leverage it to get everything um, balanced and back online faster. So for example, we used Foxtrot uh, to go in and we memo post transactions pretty much on a daily basis. That way we would at least have a pr fairly good picture of what was going on. As you know, many uh, we were running mostly in store and forward mode, which is not going to memo post the customer's accounts. So we were able to pull all that data from the uh, you know from the computers and then generate lists of memo posts to post to the customer's accounts. And we're talking you know thousands and thousands of transactions here. So something that you would just never be able to do. I mean, it's just not feasible to do without some sort of automation. 
And you know, it would only take uh, maybe an hour or so to post thousands of accounts to the transactions. And it would let us kind of get a better picture and still make sure that ATM transactions could process and things like that. And we also used it when things finally did process, I'm sure many of you know, there were um, there was a time lag between when the transaction occurred and when it was posted. Well, that results in potential differences in interest. So rather than waiting for um, a Jack Henry solution, if there even was one, I'm not sure, we use Foxtrot to calculate out those interest accruals and make the corresponding adjustments accordingly. So basically, because of all this, and you know, what it gave us this ability is obviously during this crisis, there's a lot of banks affected, and you know, Jack Henry is doing whatever they can do to get things up and running. They're probably, as I'm sure many of you are aware, not focused on your specific institution at that time because they've got so much going on. So because we had these tools, it basically let us take control of the situation and solve our problems on our own. And so at the end of the day, we were all, um, you know, we were told by Jack Henry that we were one of the first banks that was basically all online and balanced and everything was posted and uh, we were good to go. And, you know, Jack Henry wanted to know how we did it. And, you know, we owe a big deal of that to Foxtrot. I don't think we would have been able to get back online quite as efficiently, efficiently without it. So, you know, you really, I mean, that was just a huge, huge benefit. So when they say that you can use it for disaster recovery type scenarios, uh, it, it definitely came in handy. All right, so now I'm going to uh, turn the presentation over to Justin Calhoun, who will be showing you a demonstration. All right, thank you very much, Wes. We appreciate your uh, time there. Um, and so for the next section, we're just going to go take a look at the Foxtrot One application on uh, Wes's environment. So I'm going to make him the presenter, so just bear with us a moment while we switch over um, to his desktop. All right, should just take a moment. All right. All right, so now we should be looking, yeah, it looks like everything is online here with um, the Foxtrot One that you can see on your screen here. Um, so for my section, what we're going to do is just kind of go through the product interface and, and the layout of Foxtrot One and then uh, walk through a um, you know, very simple uh, process of you know, dragging and dropping and just really demonstrating the technique that we use to interact with the Silver Lake browser system and, and really any application for that matter. Um, and then show you a script that Wes and I had built to uh, go through it and uh, perform a rewards um, process. So specifically, you know, um, there was a reward program where if a user were to sign up for e-statements, then we would use a Foxtrot script to go in and post a transaction, you know, give the customer $10 promotional credit uh, for performing that task. So we'll demonstrate that process for you. So Foxtrot One, um, as you can see on your screen, it's really laid out into four major sections. And we have our top piece, which is our file uh, menu options. So you can gain access to all of your tools throughout the product and then your help documentation and so on. And below that is our script center. And this is really your main workspace of Foxtrot One. It consists of our selector tool, which is how we drag and drop and identify any application that we want to work with. Uh, you know, drag and drop on menus and, and links and, and fields and so on. And below that is our actions list. So these actions are uh, very self-explanatory. You know, and like Dan was mentioned earlier, there's no programming involved. So you just kind of go through the list and point and click at the actions that you want to use for your script. Um, and they're grouped into different categories as far as working with data and working with display messages and feedback and, and file and folder management and so on. And to the right of that is our task window. So as we go through and build our script, you'll see the actions populate in this area. And further to the right is our task panel. So we're going to uh, organize our actions into multiple tasks uh, to help keep track. So below the script center is our view center. 
And the View Center is really just used for um, viewing your data files. So if you, of course, run a query, if you're using 360 or, or um, you know, business objects or uh, analytics, anything like that, so you would just uh, run your query to gather a list of accounts that you need to perform maintenance on and then export that to Excel, and then you can view that Excel file within the Foxtrot View Center. All right, so below the View Center is our Run Center. So once we have our data loaded and our script built, we would just come down and use these controls to start the process. So we click the big play button, or if we need to rewind the script, or control any run options and view any statistics that you'd like. Uh, we also provide a speed control bar to control the speed of the script. All right, so that's the basic layout of Foxtrot 1. So the next part, we just want to walk through uh, how would we load information into the Silver Lake interface. So as you can see, it's to the right of Foxtrot 1. We have the Silver Lake browser application. Now, also keep in mind that this could be any application in your organization. It doesn't have to be just Silver Lake browser. It could be the emulator version. It could be the Windows version. It could be experience, uh, but it could also be any other ancillary or third-party system that you have uh, that's web-based or Windows-based. Um, so just keep that in mind as we go through this. So we have it uh, open up to the transaction information screen, which is where we would start our script to post um, the specific credit for the account. And uh, we have the data file loaded already. Uh, below here you can see there's a, just a list of field names in the file as well as the values. And there's about 25 records that we're uh, going to post transactions for. So as you can see, it just lists uh, kind of demographic and account information. Now let me just walk through how we load that into Foxtrot. So I'm going to close this data out. And we'll click on Open Data. And this will give you access to pull in information anywhere locally on a drive or on a network folder and so on. And we support all major file types, so anything from access files to DBF, Excel, CSV, text, and so on. All right, so today's file is just this uh, kind of a database file. And to give you an idea of what the file looks like, uh, it's a very basic uh, flat file format. So your first row would be all your field names, all your subsequent rows is your account information. We click on the file, we click on open, and now we're going to populate our view center. So the next step is really to just uh, tell Foxtrot how to load this information in Silver Lake. So we use a drag and drop process. Now I'm not going to build the entire script now. We've already built the script. But I just want to show you a few actions to uh, give you a taste of the uh, technique that we use. We use our selector tool, and we drag and we drop onto the fields we want to interact with. So behind the scenes, during this drag and drop process, Foxtrot's gathering all the information about this application. So we're, we're trying to identify what type of application it is, what type of field it is. And then after we've identified that, we'll just present the user with a list of actions that a user can do with that application. So these would be called smart actions. So they'll just specific to this type of target, this type of text field. So in this example, since we want to populate the fields, we're going to select Send Data Action, because we want to send data from our file to the screen. So we use Send Data, and we would use our Expression Builder icon to the right to gain access to our file. So now here we have our data file, and you can see there's other views to change, uh, select from. So if we want to send information, you know, from our keyboard, um, you know, date and time options, and you know, the list goes on. So we're going to use the information from our file, and we would just select the appropriate field. So I targeted the account number, so you would just select the account number from the list. And then click OK. You can adjust any format options or keystroke options um, that your system would require. But simply, you just hit the OK button to execute the action. So you can see a couple of things just happened. We have uh, action number one is in our list in the um, uh, with, uh, task window. And then the information is being sent to the screen in real time. Now, also what Dan mentioned earlier, you can see that this information is being sent real time, which is really, so really, it's really seeing the information being put in, uh, just like you would be putting it in from a keyboard. So all your security is still in place. All the um, 
the data validation as you're processing is still in place. So the result of that is, of course, of a cleaner uh, database, as, as um, uh, more accurate, if you will. So all those are still intact. So you would just kind of repeat that process for each field you want to interact with. Uh, just drag and drop, identify the field. You can see it kind of puts a black box around the field that you're selecting um, you know, for certain applications. So you just kind of rinse and repeat, as they say, right? So uh, send data. For this would just be a D. I'll just use my keyboard to type that in, hit the OK button, and send the information. So that's a technique that we use to interact with applications. Again, it could be anything in your um, organization, any type of application. Now let's take a look at a task that we've already uh, previously built. So this would be more uh, closer to your production environment. You know, so we can notate these scripts as far as where they want to start on. Um, and then we can also see that we use if statements to uh, provide logic in our scripts. You know, so we use if then to do a field comparison. So we want to compare values, or if we want to look for errors on the screen, we can say if this error exists, you know, go around it or, or create an exception file and so on. So now what we're going to do is just kind of um, run through this script. Oops, let me go back here. I'm just going to walk through one action at a time, so you can watch it perform the action as it goes through. You can follow along with our expression pointer, it's the yellow arrow there, and that's going to execute the next action. So right now it's just overriding the information that you saw me just drag and drop in there and all the other send data actions that are populating the TRAN uh, code and then the amount. And of course, putting in the description for this particular transaction and then clicking Submit. Looks for any error messages that may have popped up and if it doesn't find any, it'll just continue on. So you can see we incorporate those if statements to look for error messages, success messages. If it finds them, it'll resolve them and move on. All right, so that's the basic of the uh, script. So now let's just take a look. Um, we'll run a few at kind of medium speed here. We'll tell Foxtrot to just run a few of them at this speed. All right, so now we're just going to hit the run button, and it's going to automatically perform those actions for us. So you can see it just takes a few moments to set up a script, uh, not very long, but once you have it set up, it's good to go as long as you have our application. So next time you have to go through, maybe you know, you're going to run this type of process every 30 days, you would just schedule it and you would, um, then you would be able to run it anytime you needed to. Any scripts are shareable, so if you wanted to put it on a shared folder and you could let somebody else run them or have access to them, uh, as long as they have the Foxtrot application installed, they'd be able to do that. And of course, they would still need to have access to, you know, perform this function within Silverlake because it would show that that user made those changes. So, you know, you, as you look at the Silverlake application, you can really see that the, all the data validation is taking place as I, as Foxtrot's typing in information. You can see Silverlake is changing the format of that information. So you see all those rules uh, taking effect. So in that case, we just came across an error message. We said, okay, that account number was not on file. So we have, were able to identify that pop-up. We resolved the error. And what we did is actually made a log file. Um, so after the script would be done processing, we could go back in and take a look at it. All right, so now we're just going to run Foxtrot at a max speed level. This would be more of a production environment. So we're going to go through and run each uh, of the rest of the 20 records. So Foxtrot really isn't going to take any resources to refresh. So it, you know, Foxtrot really doesn't you know, have anything to display at this point. It kind of blanks out everything. And the system is just processing information. So with a basic script like this, you, know, you can expect somewhere between you know, 7 and, and 13 records per minute. So when you compare that to a manual entry, 
a significant increase in speed, but really it's eliminating any type of time needed for a user to do that, as well as errors. So with that being said, that's kind of the basic overview of our application. Um, and you know, we're going to let this continue to process for, for Wes, as this is a, you know, will be a production script for him in the future. Um, but again, if you have any questions about this, please post it in the um, uh, chat log, and we'd be glad to get to them here uh, in just a moment. All right, so with that, um, I want to kick it back over to Greg um, to wrap it up. Okay, thank you, Justin, and, and thank you to Wes as well for uh, allowing us access to a system, and um, it was a really great demo, a great success for us. I want to remind everybody, uh, everyone listening now, that we do have a few minutes uh, for question and answers. If you have a question for Justin or Wes, you can simply submit that question to us using the chat box on your screen. Uh, now would be the time to do that. We've already received a few questions while Justin was presenting. And I'll read a few of those now. First question is, will Foxtrot 1 move data between emulators and web-based applications? Justin, that's, that's probably a question for you. Yeah, no problem. So great question. And uh, Foxtrot, just to give you a, kind of a high level first, is that um, you know, Foxtrot can move data in multiple directions. So you can extract data out of systems and create a file, or you can extract data um, you know, out of systems and put it into another system. So, and those systems could be any type of platform, anything from Windows-based systems, emulators, um, and websites as well. So, uh, I know that's kind of a longer answer to a um, short question, but uh, the, the simple answer, I guess, would be yes, you can do that. Um, and it all uses the same technique, the drag and drop technique to interact with both uh, types of applications. Great. Thanks, Justin. Next question. Is Foxtrot 1 able to compare data from two applications and provide a report of the differences? Okay, yeah, I'll go that one too. Um, so, yeah, we had a good recent example where, um, you know, the Q, really a QA department uh, wanted to extract data from their loan origination system and then go through and compare that information um, to their core system, you know, so we we're able to uh, you know, show that you can go in and copy information. We would just store it locally within Foxtrot from both applications and then run through a series of if statements um, to compare the data and then give you the results if it all matched or if it no matched. Great. Thanks, Justin. Well, it looks like we have one more question here. Is there a, is there a record feature in Foxtrot 1? Sure. So the record feature, you know, it's uh, kind of similar to a lot of um, maybe other uh, macro-like uh, functionality, but um, really on our Foxtrot 1 application, our selector tool, you can actually change that into a record button. So if you needed to record a series of mouse clicks or, or certain events, uh, you could just hit the record feature and then go through and perform your process and Foxtrot record each action along with it. Um, and of course, we'll play back in a mouse sequence, if you will. Great. Okay, thanks, Justin, very much. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dan Walbaum once again to close out the webinar. And uh, here's Dan. Thanks. Okay, well, again, thank you, Wes, and thank you, Justin and Greg, for addressing those questions. I'd like to just take a few moments to wrap up. And again, thank each of you for participating today. We wanted to introduce you to what we feel is a, is a better alternative to manual efforts, to programmatic efforts, or outsourcing these tasks, or not even being able to get to them at all because of either time or cost, by introducing Foxtrot, our data automation software solution. The whole idea is to allow you to do these data-related tasks of automating data entry in your organization, automating data maintenance projects, data integration projects, migration, aggregation, 
data parsing, data cleansing, data scraping, data validation, and do these things with 100% accuracy, security, with the application to automate these functions. Not only works with Silverlake, but works against any uh, Windows application or a browser application or, of course, green screen application or even Excel. Um, uh, side benefit here is uh, we've got some of these, we have some videos on our website, www.enablesoft.com, where we show how Foxtrot is used with Excel. So your, your accounting folks, your CFO, your finance people will uh, basically kind of go crazy when they see what the, the, the automation that Foxtrot, Foxtrot can do in their Excel world as well. We work across all platforms. The nice thing about Foxtrot is you automate processes. Uh, again, it's like adding people without adding people. And obviously, every bank in America today is focused on the efficiency ratio of their institution, the bottom line of their institution. Everybody daily has more to do than time to do it. So Foxtrot is geared to address those areas by helping to save significant time and dollars. And as West illustrated in some of the ways that he has used Foxtrot or is using Foxtrot today. And again, there's a significant positive impact to the bottom line with this technology. So that's just a quick summary. By way of suggested next steps, again, we thank each of you for taking your time today. We would invite you to take a look at our website where you can see some video demonstrations at our Foxtrot TV location on our, on our website as, as well as see customer testimonials and so on. After the presentation today, you'll be receiving a, uh, a thank you letter with a copy, uh, with a link to a copy of the presentation. And then we invite you certainly to contact us if you'd like to set up, schedule your own specific presentation or demonstration for your institution, for various folks in your institution. And, and frankly, we, we really encourage people who begin to take a look at this technology to get all aspects of operations, your lending operations, and, and your operations management, your executive management, senior management, and so on, as well as operations folks, deposit operations, lending operations, your IT folks, retail banking folks, uh, your marketing folks. Foxtrot, literally, we have banks all over the country, Jack Institutions institutions all over the country that literally have scores or hundreds of scripts that they deploy throughout their entire institution. Again, when many times we, we, we say to people, when, when you think spreadsheets, you think Excel, but when people invest in Foxtrot, their institution, whenever they think data, they think Foxtrot. So operations, IT folks, marketing, retail, it's used in all areas, the financial part, of, the accounting part of your institutions. But um, we would certainly welcome the opportunity to present to your, to your team. And then lastly, we encourage you to consider one of the nice things about our application is we, in the process that people take when they're investing or, or, or considering investing in this technology, we do what we call a proof of concept. Uh, before we ask you to invest in our product, we like to prove we like to prove that Foxtrot can do the data-related tasks, and, and prove that it can target the, the respective application, and prove that there's the functionality, and prove that there's time and dollar savings. So we have a proof of concept. So of all the things that we've suggested as far as a follow-up, we highly encourage you to consider allowing us to do a proof of concept where we take a two-hour time frame and we build a script around a data-related task in your organization. And we'd be delighted to, to, to do that with your institution to prove how Foxtrot, again, can save significant time and dollars and drive significant improvements in business process efficiency for your institution. So those are the suggested next steps. And to wrap everything up, here's just a couple of quotes from institutions just like yourself who have invested in Foxtrot. and. Um, and then lastly, I'd like to close with, with a quote uh, actually from Henry Ford from long ago, but he says, if you need a tool and don't buy it, then you'll ultimately find that you've paid for it, but you don't own it. So this might possibly apply to this situation here. But uh, we certainly, again, appreciate each of you taking your time with us this afternoon. We're under the 60-minute time period that we asked for. We look forward to hearing from you, and we look forward to uh, seeing how Foxtrot might be able to automate multiple functions in your institution. I want to say a special thanks, finally, to Wes Berry again for joining us this afternoon. One of the things I failed to mention is Wes, as some of you might know, but Wes is currently not only a, a senior manager at his institution, but he is also president of the Jack Henry Northeast Regional User Group there, uh, again, in the Northeast. So again, Wes, we want to say thank you for taking your time, and we look forward to any questions and look forward to uh, some of these follow-up items. Thank you again for taking your time this afternoon. Good afternoon.